Hi, everyone. Pastor Galen, lead pastor at Shine Hills Church. Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. We hope that these podcasts will be a real encouragement to you on your spiritual journey. You can also connect with Shine Hills at shinehills.org. Hope you enjoy the program. We are across the street and around the world. Shine Hills. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. And Nathan, we are on school day. This is picture day. You take pictures of your kids and post them on Facebook so everybody can see. Oh, how fun. Is that what, do you, do you guys still take pictures of your kids? Oh, we First do. First day of school? Yeah. We do, but nor- and normally they're they're all bundled up with their backpacks and everything else about to walk into the school So here's building. a funny one. One of the st- gals and staff, she has a, a high schooler, I think he's a junior this year, and, and his school picture was driving off in his truck to school. It's like, yep, there's my son, quick, <laughs> as he goes, as he's driving away. And that's probably nice. the most you'll see of him most yeah, of the year, right? right? right. Saying, driving. As I recall, I mean, especially when our kids were in, in high school, uh, in, not in high school, but in their senior year in high school, it's like, man, you'd have thought they already graduated and were gone. I right. didn't see them at all that right. senior year. They're always, it's just God's way, I think, preparing us uh, for. They're pushing on to bigger and better things. Yeah, so, that's a good thing. Well, and so now people that are pushing on to bigger and better things, it's all paid for. Did you see this in the news? Oh, it's all just a... Just there's a, a lot to unpack. There. Okay. You know. I would like to hear... I mean, I know what my thoughts are on it, but I thought right. I'd like to hear the Christian worldview. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And part of it, you know, I look at this and I currently, of all things, I am back in a grad program, which means I, I have a student loan myself. Is this new... Three hundred billion dollars? Would it cover that, or is it just I, undergrad? I don't know, and I don't either. And obviously, it's one of those things where it's really concerning because, frankly, what the evidence shows is that the vet, the people that will benefit from some sort of amnesty uh, of of education funds like that, are generally high paid workers. Huh. And the people that will be paying for that are the people that go into things like electrical or plumbing or a lot of those things. So literally, we're taxing the poor to pay the rich. It's oh, anti-Robin Hood. Wow. It is a dangerous, that, dangerous concept. You know, I had not thought of that. That mm-hmm. I have some other reasons I agree with you, but that's that's an interesting take. Yeah. So the guys go out and go to trade school. And they're not going to get helped with this three hundred billion dollars. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Imagine they that, go through a trade right. school. There's no help. Right. You go. Let's say that you actually go and you get your master uh, uh, electrician license, and yeah. you're doing a great job. Yeah. And then to realize that at some point you are paying for someone else, paying for them to go to a gender stu- gender studies program, oh. uh, you know, at, at a local university. Oh. Um, there, there are so many issues with that. I don't even know where to begin, but yeah. it is, it is just not uh, the right way to think through the process. But, but even, I mean, that just basically the blue collar guys playing for the white collar kids. That's right. Probably not, not saying that they all can afford college, and I know it's expensive and all mm-hmm. those other things. But you know, um, yeah, that that's disturbing. Yeah. The the frustrating thing for me is that you know, and I've watched this happen. It's like it's more true every year. That we send, we can bring our kids up through uh, school and, and Sunday school and re- in our homes, and put Christ in their hearts. And boy, it doesn't take those guys are masterful at unscrewing mm-hmm. the top of their heads and putting in ideas and questions that um, I don't know. I just think uh, we, we've lost a lot of our our kids as a result of that. And you know, you know, I, I it's frustrating to me to think mm-hmm. that, and we're going to subsidize that by mm-hmm. paying for it now. There's also another thing, and I wanted to ask you if this is true or if you've heard this is true. Um, Three hundred billion dollars, but you think that's a lot of money, which it is. Mm-hmm. But it really doesn't go that far when it gets down to the individual. Right. Like if a, if a guy comes out with a hundred and fifty thousand dollar debt, it may take ten thousand dollars of that debt. He's mm-hmm. still got to pay one hundred and forty. So it's it's not helping that much, and yet it's taxing the wrong right. the wrong folks. To your point. One of the things is that, that we've is also, that a true? you are spot on, okay. and actually I'll just add on a little bit to it. So we know from uh, education funding through the Hathaway Scholarship Program. So I recall when this would come through the Wyoming legislature, yep. uh, every year or two there would be a bill to try to raise how much uh, would be distributed through the Hathaway Scholarship yep. Program. And the hope is that it would cover more of a student's educa- total educational cost. Right. But every time we would raise that amount, the universities would raise their Find tuition rates. Find more costs. Ah. Exactly. Oh. And so it, it, it's a never-ending uh, battle. So yeah. one of the crazy things about dumping literally uh, 
uh, what was it, three hundred billion dollars? That's what I heard. That's what I read. So somewhere. a third of a trillion dollars. A you dump that into the education establishment wow. in in America, and it actually will just be like throwing a pebble in the ocean. Eventually, they're just going to. Uh, it'll all be absorbed, and people will be back trying to ask for more money. Yeah, and uh, it's a dangerous well, idea. And any time the government dis- distributes money, it's like we know from this. This PPP loan. Yeah. So there's always people that find a way to scam the system, and it's always, I don't know. I don't know why we continue to vote for people that do this kind of stuff because yeah. it just ends up being in places that is not regulated and well. Well, and right. anyway, that's that's my own personal beef with it. But it's like uh, I don't. I really don't think it's going to make that much difference. But it sure it sure make it a big dent yeah. in a somebody's budget, and I think it's the United yeah. States government. Well, one of the things that concerns me is basically the blatant attempt to try to curry favor with um, uh, certain segments of the voting populace, mm. literally buying the vote uh, and, and using all of our money to buy someone else's vote. Yeah. Um, that is something I think that could be republic breaking at yeah. some level. Yeah. And the damage that it can cause, you know, and, and you notice over time that things will start to correct themselves. Um, but the damage caused between the initial action and the correction can be something that can harm an entire generation. Yeah. And so I'm really concerned uh, about that effort. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, I would imagine, that, you know, if you look at it, everybody's had maybe some kind of a benefit or whatever for from the government. So it's like you have to be careful with these things. But just in principle, like what you're saying, it's a uh, in principle, it's. It's just a little bit disturbing, and I don't know that it's going to make that much, 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 uh, much difference in people, young people's lives. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the cost of education is significant, and I know that's yeah. going up. There's no question about that. I don't know if there's the solutions, but I I have heard a few. Okay, oh. so I've talked to some Love people. Love to hear solutions. Well, so I've asked some people, hey, what are you doing next year for college? Or you know, you're in college, right? Yeah, what are you doing? And but they're taking classes online mm-hmm. more all the time. Right. I hear that a lot. I wonder mm-hmm. if you hear hear that. I'm actually taking two classes right now so online you're, you're, via know. Zoom. So they are live, but uh, that has given us the opportunity to feel like yeah. that we're in a classroom. Yeah. And they want to see your face on Zoom and all that. Okay. So it's not just uh, clicking a button and listen to a pre recorded thing. It. There's uh, there's some nurses that I've talked to and they're they're doing, taking their nursing degrees and there's yeah. doing there's other people that are doing different disciplines that I would I would not have expected. Now they have to do the practical, um, you know, um, you know, be in the hospital and have to some right. internships and those kind of things as well, which is obviously you'd have to have. But uh, it's interesting to me the shift to online studies, and it makes you wonder if that, you know, in a liberal arts degree. If you could just go and study the things that you really wanted and needed, right? There's some there's some value in that. I'm glad there's avenues that are making that happen, so you don't have to take yeah. all the psych classes, all the. That, to right. me, that's some of that those sciences and those psych classes. That's where kids get their faith ends up being very wobbly, and it's uh, right, right, it's just, and it's uh, it's unnerving for for me as a pastor anyway. Well, and, and that's an interesting question when it comes to education. Uh, I like the way a fellow by the name of Larry Arn, uh, president to Hillsdale College, uh, has described the, the the challenge for all of us today. Today, many teachers uh, treat teaching as though you're doing something to someone, but the historic understanding of what it means to actually teach, and this is this is something that a pastor comes to see uh, very well. But every teacher has to come to see it as as well. You're actually walking through something with someone. You're yeah. not doing something to them. Oh. You're there's supposed to be that interaction with the material. And so and, and you know this from every time you teach the word of God, as you begin to teach it, even more things become revealed to you each time. Oh yeah, for sure. And so that yeah, that whole right. understanding of what it means to educate. Yeah. Uh, um there's a guy, Kenny White and I both had a mentor that used to say this about uh, about teaching. He said, "You're not teaching uh uh material, you're teaching people." Hmm. And so if you have to stop 
if you have to slow down, if you realize there's a lot of questions coming, by all means, don't just hurry to the end of your lesson. Yeah. You're teaching people. Yeah. So answer the question that they're raising. And I think that's a very healthy yeah. way to approach the project. So here's another, I mean, let's go to the other end of the spectrum with education, because we just started uh, our Christian school today, along with every other yeah. school in town. And um, and we've got up to third grade this year, and there's classes are full, going well and all that. But one of the one of the things that that was really an emphasis is on reading and phonics. Mm -hmm. And phonics is a, a word that kind of ebbs and flows. You hear about it for right. a while, and then it'll kind of fade away, and the other right. ideas will come up. And then they go back to phonics, right? Right. We we saw this ebb and flow in our kids' lives, mm -hmm. and I'm seeing it. I'm seeing this kind of cycle through again. But I, I actually heard a program on on the news. They were talking about phonics and how really important it is not to to skirt this idea, you know, to say this is what the letter is and this is what the letter sounds like and over and over and over so kids get it. Right. And instead of saying, okay, here's a picture of a fox and standing on a box and you can look at those things and and then figure out what these words are. Right. And people are finding out that, okay, that's not working. Okay. Right. That that intuitive kind of learning or whatever they style they call that isn't isn't working, and so they're sight going. Say, I think it's called sight say, isn't it? Maybe I Something don't know. Like that. I yeah. just heard him describe it, mm -hmm. and then but they're going back to phonics, saying you know if yeah. it's a, a B, it stinks the B sound. That's right. phonics. This is what the letter looks like. This is what the letter sounds like, and there's a lot of that. And so our our school is really really turning to that focus. But what I found is that <clears throat> there's a lot of schools around our country doing that. My daughter-in-law works in a school down in, in uh, it's in Boulder County actually, and they had this whole uh, week-long talk about they've got to get back to phonics, and it's just interesting to me how yeah uh, how these things kind of ebb and flow. If you do you have any thoughts on that issue? <laughs> oh. Many, many thoughts. Let's hear it. So you're going to have to probably uh, derail me here in just a moment because <laughs> I'm about to load up. Okay. Go I do it. care very much about phonics, and I am so thankful for the emphasis my mom and dad put on yeah. the subject of phonics and, and actually following on to that, the subject of etymology. Okay. Uh, yeah. By the way, I asked my children last night at the table, what is etymology? And my little girl said, well, isn't that the study of bugs? I yeah. said, no, 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 that's entomology. Yeah. Etymology is the study of the origin of words. Yeah. So as you learn those principles, they begin to apply in so many different ways. Yeah. And again, we're teaching learners how to learn. Oh. And it's and it's a far more profitable way to go. I, you know, just I'm going to inject yeah. here. I just I don't want to break the momentum, but I love that learning what words mean. Yes. I used to, I mean, that's a, a real nerd thing to do, and I would never think that I would be interested in it. And, you know, going to seminary and you, you start learning, you know, Greek, and you, you see some of these words that, that are, you know, it's like, oh, this is the origin of that word. This is where right. it came from. This is what it meant. I just it really come to love right. that that whole study and understanding. So no, that's, I, I think it does help you understand yeah. the just words in general, and then it, it makes you really appreciate God's Word. And right. so that's, that's kind of my connection. Right, and the more you know about a word, the more instead of just uh, going from... Let me give an illustration, if you will. If, if you're just making a pencil drawing, and then you move into watercolors, and then you move into acrylics, and then you move into full oil paints, you know, the more you learn about a word, imagine all of those words strung into a sentence. Yeah. Uh, the, the more educated you become, a very simple sentence can mean more to an educated person sure. than the same sentence does to a less educated person. Right. Exactly. So that's the great joy of it. But one of the great challenges that we have faced since the rise of the, uh, you have to remember, it's just during the time, the time of Jimmy Carter, that the national, uh, what do you call it, Department of Education was founded. Okay. And so over the last 40 years, when you look at what has occurred in that time frame, we've seen that the education industrial complex has had more and more funding dumped into it, but our education hasn't necessarily risen. So we, are, we have the most uh, yeah. um, expensive education system in the world, and yet we're not in the top 20 in the world, in in, uh, in our education, output right? Of, of exactly students. Wow. So you you take wow. a curriculum issue like like phonics. This is yeah. forgive me for taking the long route yeah, that's to right. this that's... point. You take something like phonics, and someone comes along with a new idea how to teach children how to do something. Yeah, but if you actually looked into it, 
maybe what actually drove this new idea was the concept of, well, if I could sell uh, three or four billion dollars worth oh, of curriculum for sure and and get as many people as possible to get into this new program, yeah. I'm going to make uh, a lot of money. Right. And so it isn't about the education itself as much as the money that surrounds it. And that really has concerned me for a long time. Yeah. And I'm sure I'm, I know that's I know that's what happens. It's just follow the money and you'll find right. out a lot of the reason for certain things. But I, I think it's endearing to find out that there's people that are really across the country that are going back to this simple thing called phonics. And and then yeah. once they understand how to make that sound of a B and then what the O sound is and what the, the X sound makes, it's like, okay, then you put this word together. Mm-hmm. And people, then it's discovery. And when you learn that read, learn to read, you get, uh, I heard a guy say this one time. He said, you got to spend the first three years of kids' lives in, in first through third grade teaching them to read. They, they learn to read. And then they will starting fourth grade on. They'll they'll uh, read to learn, mm-hmm. and and when you start making self discoveries in yeah. God's word in life or whatever, those are the, the things that stick in your heart. Truly, you know. But and I I think that's where truth comes from. Is you have to be able to read it, see it, understand it yourself, and then you can apply it to your life. And these these basics of it's really the building blocks of understanding how to read first. Right and do it accurately, and these words, these sounds mean things that it matters, and then, uh, then you understand that language matters, and then this is the language and written language. This is how God communicated. Uh, I think it's fascinating. I, it's one of those things that growing up I never had appreciation for, and now right. I'm hoping to impact at least a few kids. Right. You know, with our that's here, really here at our school, I and I, I I'm anxious to see how what kind of impact it has on our kids. Mm-hmm. So. I agree. Well. I think this subject of education is of such importance. For instance, um, the the great desire to help what, what is happening right here and then what is driving us as we are working on the Hillsdale College Charter School and the 1776 curriculum. Yeah. Uh, all of those things working together, when you look at it, 95.1% of our students uh, have no alternative. So we could fully fill up every single school that we could start, if we could start them as fast as possible, Mm. and we're still not going to make a dent in the need. And that's where we have to find the ability to mutually support one another. So I know that you guys were going down this road with uh, a charter school. Can you give me, give us an update on where that's at and how that's going? Absolutely. Love to. This is really intriguing. So first of all, Hillsdale College has accepted us, one of only seven schools in the United States this year. Is that right? And so they have been uh, walking with us through the entire process. We interviewed a tremendous guy at the time of this taping uh, just last Friday. Uh, who is just amazing, just one of the most uh, extraordinary guys as a potential headmaster for us. Okay. And then have found, uh, looking at a location, but then a permanent location, looking to purchase land and then build on it. Okay. All of those things are going well, but here in just uh, very soon, in the month of September, so two occasions, September the 6th and then September the... uh, I cannot remember the second day, but it's like the 16th, 17th, somewhere in there. We're going to be in front of the Wyoming State Loan and Investment Board. Okay, it's the top five elected officials in the in in the state of Wyoming, and uh, putting in our application. We've already put in our application, but then they will make a decision uh, in the month of September uh, regarding that application, and then we are planning to get started August of 2023. 2023. So yes, you're right. you're out right. from right now. You think you'll be able to have do you, yeah. so. Do you Everything think you're going to break ground and build a school, or are you going to start in an existing building? We have to start in an existing building. Gotcha. And gotcha. in Wyoming, uh, Cheyenne has been growing so fast. Yeah. It's been very difficult to find a building. So uh, yeah. we're going to probably have to start at the lowest grades the first year, which is not our 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 goal. Our goal, we're going K through 12. Okay. And so what that will do, especially in the upper grades, is provide a resource for a lot, hopefully many, many other schools to begin to access okay. uh, that junior high and especially high school, which uh, is where it gets far more expensive to teach a child. Sure. Yeah. And uh, so we'll start in those earliest grades 
uh, we're looking at a location. I don't know if I should say it right now, no. but uh, on the south side of town, uh, that looks very promising for the okay. first couple of years. It's a it's a very good building, and it would be a symbiotic relationship okay. with some folks uh, over there. Okay. And then we're also looking right now at land mm -hmm. that we are looking to purchase and then build on. So wow. all of those things are happening simultaneously, That's and big. I can tell you in leading the effort, it now, has been a great opportunity. So maybe this is too too much information that you can divulge, but uh, at a charter school, does does the does the dollars for for land and building does that come from the from the city coffers or whatever mm -hmm. state coffers? How's that work? That is a very good question. And so, at, at the first uh, at the outset, you know we're we're starting under a new program right now, and we're actually looking at the need potentially for more legislation, mm -hmm. because what what has occurred is we've had to fight like the Dickens. I don't know what that means, by the way, but we've had to the fight Dickens? like the Dickens. Well, there's, it's got it's got to have a, 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 an origin somewhere. We, right. we could look it up. I think the origin for me is uh, uh, Veggie Tales when I was a kid. <laughs> it's like Charles Dickens writing. It's kind of long and wordy. And oh, there you okay. go. Maybe. Well, that's the best I've heard. I'm I'm today. thankful for smart guys. You know, <laughs> that's good. One of the things that we're we're working on is. Uh, how that relationship will work between yeah. uh, the school facilities planning commission and our efforts. And so we have some precedences, but uh, right now some of this is brand new ground we're, we're breaking. So I've had people actually talk about this school and excited about this school and know about it that's coming soon and all these things. And the question always comes up, so will they be able to, they the school, be able to really – uh, have jurisdiction over the curriculum and all those things. Do you have mm -hmm. complete control over that? Yes. Okay. It, that's the only reason for a charter school. I agree. And right. that is what is baked into the charter uh -huh. and signed by both parties. Uh -huh. And for us, we um, it, this is, we have on purpose partnered with another source, i.e. Hillsdale College, yeah. so that if, um, and, and we have seen this Which in other- Which is an accredited right. institution, yeah. Right, with very deep and very comprehensive and excellent curricula, yeah. especially in their 1776 history program. Okay. Um, if the state, God forbid, I don't want this to happen, but it has happened in Europe, and we see questionable signs in, in Canada, if they begin to try to change the, the, the ball game on us, if yes. they begin to insist that we institute woke ideology right. into our curriculum, they will have violated a charter, first of all, so we literally have recourse to push back. Oh, well, and then the second thing is, you know, if, if God forbid, but something like that ha begins to happen in Wyoming, we can begin to pull back altogether from that charter. Okay. Wow. No, well, that's you answered questions that I didn't even know how to ask. But that's yeah. those are things I've always been curious about how a charter school yeah. works. And we don't have how many do we have in Wyoming? Charter schools? Yeah. We only have six, I believe, right now. So a couple of them are actually they look like two charters, uh, but they're actually part of the same one. For instance, in, in our community right now, there are two charters, but they're actually both named the same name. One is the high school, one is the elementary school. Okay. So it's the same entity, but it just is in two locations gotcha. and has two charters. Well, I wish you all the best with that. I think our community needs all kinds. I think our Amen. state needs all kinds of options, and mm -hmm. I know this is a, a great option. It's a proven option, right. and people are seeing huge results in right. the learning, education, understanding, historical understanding of right. of life and uh it's just it's something that's refreshing, and I'm glad you're championing or you're championing this this fight. And and we as Christians, let me just say this real quick before we go. I we need to be involved at every level. We yeah. have school board elections coming up. Oh yeah. And so the moment you turn your back on uh, on a public school board, uh, you know that begins to move even faster and faster and faster in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. So we need to be involved in school board races. Yep. And in private schools, Christian schools, charter schools, Amen. at every opportunity, we need to be involved. I totally agree with you. I, you know, somebody was asking me why, why is it, why do I care so much? We got a Christian school, and it's like, well, it's a, you know, a tiny drop. It's just mm -hmm. not even, even a half a drop in the bucket of, right. of the ocean of of students that are here and even in our city. But you know, I'm for I'm for you know all the kids' hearts and minds being exposed right. to a great education and exposed right. to an education that has books that are uh, pass a moral muster and those right. kinds of things that 
you know, I know everybody's got different ideas, but to be involved and be active, um, I'm I'm pulling for the hearts and minds of our kids, whatever that That's may good. look like. So glad you're championing the Amen. charter school in your in the Hillsdale College uh, arena. Well, as we always say here, in this world that you have raising up kids in, you've got to be as parents strong and very courageous. God bless you guys. Amen.